Welcome to part 16 of this series on Moby Dick. In this lecture, we will discuss chapters 115 through 125. In chapter 115, the Pequod encounters another ship called the Bachelor. The ship is bound home for Nantucket with a full hole of sperm. The atmosphere on the Bachelor is festive, and the captain invites Ahab to join him on his ship. Ahab flatly denies the captain's offer. Thou art too damned jolly. Sail on. How wondrous familiar is a fool. In chapter 116, Ahab kills a whale and speaks to it as it turns to the sun in its death throes. In vain, O whale, dost thou seek intercedings with yon all-quickening sun that only calls forth life but gives it not again. In chapter 117, Fadala prophecies to Ahab that Ahab will not die until he sees two hearses, one that is not made by mortal hands and another one that is made by wood from America. Ahab believes that it is unlikely to see two hearses at sea and therefore concludes that he will not die on this voyage. This chapter is similar to the scene in Macbeth, where the three weird sisters give Macbeth a false sense of security. Like Macbeth, Ahab misinterprets the prophecies as good omens rather than ill. In chapter 118, Ahab realizes that the instruments of science that identify his latitude on the earth do not tell him what he truly wants to know, such as where Moby Dick is. He curses science in general and destroys his quadrant. Foolish toy, baby's plaything of haughty admirals and commodores and captains. The world brags of thee, of thy cunning and might. But what, after all, canst thou do but tell the poor pitiful point where thou thyself happenest to be on this wide planet, and the hand that holds thee? No, not one jot more. Thou canst not tell where one drop of water or one grain of sand will be tomorrow noon. In chapter 119, a typhoon slams the Pequod, and the ship's three masts catch fire. Ahab forbids his crew from hoisting up lightning rods to divert the lightning from the ship. Though Starbuck and the other crew members interpret the storm and the fires as ill omens, Ahab believes that they signify his imminent triumph over Moby Dick. In chapter 120, Starbuck advises Ahab to take down the sails, lest the Pequod lose them during the typhoon. But Ahab remains defiant towards the storm and orders the crew to merely lash the sails to the masts. In chapter 121, Stubb and Flask tie the anchors to the ship. Stubb remarks upon the ominous feeling he has about the fate of the ship and of themselves. Seems to me we are lashing down these anchors now as if they were never going to be used again. Tying these two anchors here, Flask, seems like tying a man's hands behind him. These lines evoke an image of a condemned criminal being led to his execution. In chapter 122, Tashtigo wishes that he was drinking rum rather than battling the typhoon. His wish indicates that the crew does not share Ahab's monomaniacal quest to kill Moby Dick at any cost, and heightens the suspense surrounding the voyage. Will the crew rebel against Ahab's command? In chapter 123, Starbuck contemplates just such a rebellion. He descends to Ahab's cabin, where Ahab is sleeping, in order to inform him that the storm has abated. However, before opening the cabin door, Starbuck withdraws a pistol and considers killing Ahab in order to save the crew from certain death. Starbuck was an honest, upright man, but out of Starbuck's heart, at that instant when he saw the muskets, there strangely evolved an evil thought. Is heaven a murderer when its lightning strikes a would-be murderer in his bed, tindering sheets and skin together? But Starbuck does not kill Ahab. Instead, he orders Stubb to inform the captain that the typhoon has abated. In chapter 124, Ahab learns that the compasses of the ship have broken during the storm, which is a bad omen among sailors. Ahab downplays the situation's significance and constructs his own compass. In his fiery eyes of scorn and triumph, you then saw Ahab in all his fatal pride. Pride comes before the fall, and this line directly foreshadows Ahab's impending death. In chapter 125, Pip utters nonsense to the crew when asked to help retrieve some instruments. Ahab is saddened by Pip's madness and declares that Pip will share his cabin with him thenceforth. O oh, ye frozen heavens, look down here. Ye did beget this luckless child and have abandoned him, ye creative libertines. Lo, ye believers in God's all goodness and in man all ill. Lo, you, see the omniscient gods oblivious of suffering man 
and man, though idiotic in knowing not what he does, yet full of the sweet things of love and gratitude. Don't forget to subscribe and join us for part 17 of this series on Moby Dick.